Okay. So before we completely get started, and as people are still logging on, um, if you would get a cup or a bowl of water, it can just be a little tiny amount. We're not going to need very much, but that will help kind of smooth any cracks that you might have in your clay. So if you need to go get that, then please do. It's not a requirement. So if you don't have access to that, then don't worry. We can work without it. And so everyone in your kit, you would have gotten a pound of clay. So when you guys are ready, please pull out that clay. We don't want it out too long because it will dry. It starts drying and we want to work with it while it's nice and soft. So I'm going to kind of watch here in the chat, um, give everyone a few minutes to pull out their clay. Go get a cup of water if you need. As you see here, I've got a little bowl of water. We just need just enough that you just need to tap your fingers in it a little bit. So all of our clays are gonna be different um, depending on what the bag was, how old it is. It might be super soft. It might be a little bit harder. And what we're gonna start doing is massaging our clay and getting it ready to make. So hopefully, looks like we've got half of the people we need here, but we're just gonna start going. And if new people come on, I can catch them up. So please take out your, your pound of clay and I just kind of ripped it in half. You want the clay to be, let's see, how can I do this so you can see me? You want the clay to be about a good handful. You don't want it too big that it's not manageable, but you just want it to kind of fit in the palm of your hand and that's gonna be the base for your pot. And to start softening it up, start rolling it between your hands. Some people might like to do this on a surface. You can kind of roll back and forth. I'm gonna go a little bit slower than normal in case there's a lag with the camera. So whenever you see a, a little bit of a, an edge there, we want everything to be round and soft. So move, pick up your piece of clay, move it, roll it some more. Move it, roll it. And the goal is to create a nice round ball. If your clay is a little bit cold or a little bit hard, you can tap just a little bit of water, tap it on top of your clay to kind of moisturize it and then roll it. It might also help to squeeze it. So we squeeze it back and forth. We're kind of warming up the clay. If we did this for too long, it would start to dry out. There's kind of a sweet spot. So what I want you guys to do is to create a nice round ball, as round as you can make it, that's not just an awkward lump, if that makes sense. So it's a little bit smoother than when you just pulled it out of your bag. And let me see here, I lost my little chat. Okay, can anyone give me some feedback and let me know where you guys are at? Do we all have a ball getting rolled? Are we ready for the next step? We've got Ooh, the ball okay. rolling. Some videos there, yay, thank you. Okay. <laughs> Having a ball here. Having a ball. I don't wanna to touch my computer now with my clay hands though. Yes. And the good thing about clay is that it comes out of everything. So you might have a nice dusty area where you're working today. And if it gets on your clothes, don't worry. It just 
washes out, unlike paint. How about a dog? Does it come out of a dog? Yes. Also, if you have an animal and some dog hair or cat hair gets into the clay, don't worry. Uh, that will burn out in the firing. <laughs> I think that's a, a nice tip to know if you are creating pottery at home, it burns out. Okay. So let's move on to the next step. And you've got your ball, it's resting nicely in your hand. If you can, for the most part, I want you to work in the air. If it, that's kind of difficult for you, then feel free to set it down on the surface. But if we can, we wanna keep a little bit of a curve because pottery, usually it doesn't just sit really flat um, like a can. We're trying to make a nice curve, if that makes sense. So you've got your ball and you're gonna take your thumb and push it down in the middle of your clay. So you're gonna push it down, but we don't wanna go all the way through. So you don't wanna go all the way through. We're going maybe about half in. When I do this with kids, I always like to make the joke of like sticking your thumb and pulling out a plum. And usually the kids just stare and they don't, they don't understand the joke. Um, but we wanna just go halfway in. <laughs> And then this is the fun part, but I make it look really easy. Please don't uh, get discouraged if yours doesn't look just like mine, because um, I've done this a hundred times, maybe a thousand times. You're going to try to pinch and squeeze and make your walls even. And how we do that is put your thumb in there, use your the rest of your fingers and you're gonna give it a squeeze and then release, turn a little bit, adjust and squeeze some more. Okay, so adjust, let loose, squeeze, twist, squeeze, or I should be saying pinch because we're making pinch pottery so I, I just turn it just a little bit and then I can tell I haven't pinched this part because it's more uneven. So pinch. And the goal is, if you can see that one of the overhead, the goal is to try to make your walls of your pot as even as possible. So I can see where I need to do some work. So if you guys can keep doing that, where you're pinching, squeeze, twist pinch, squeeze, twist. And keeping that in the palm of your hand, if possible, will give you a nice shape. You might see, ooh, I have a little bit more on one side than the other. So give it a little squeeze. The goal is to not make it too thin where your walls don't hold up. So squeezing and turning, but don't don't squeeze too much. I'm going to say maybe keep it a half inch thick, maybe a quarter inch thick if that is kind of a good reference. But we want our walls to be pretty strong. We don't want them to flop over. Let's see, Mamo. Yeah, Mamo asked how thin the walls should be. And if you can think about it, um, if you wanna just do a pinch pot and, and have your, your piece be this big and you can do another one with the rest of your clay, go ahead. But I'm gonna also show you how to do coils and build up. So you want your walls to be able to hold more clay. So you don't want them too thick because that's just, you know, you don't want it really heavy, but you also don't want it too thin. Um, you probably saw this was the example that I made and we were using it to promote this workshop. So this is a finished pinch pot and I created my pinch pot and then added coils. And I also have this example of if you wanted to make a mug, um, you can make your pinch pot base, then create your coils, build up as you 
as high as you can with how much clay you have. Attach a little handle. And if we have time, I'll show you how to attach a handle. Um, yeah, so you could do that if you wanted. If you are joining the Mediterranean um, Herb Garden workshop later today with the Kansas State uh, Extension Office, she's going to show you, Lisa is going to show you um, how you can use this pot to plant seeds, to start seeds in it. And you could use this without a hole in it, but if you want to, if you definitely want to create it for a planter, um, for something small, like a little succulent, then I'll also show you how to put a little hole in the bottom for drainage. You don't have to do that if you can, you know, not overwater something, but you can make just a little cup. We can put a hole in it if you want it to be a planter. We can do a little handle if you want a pinch pot mug. Can you show those under your document camera from the side view? Uh, yeah, like, it, like yeah. this? And then talk about, yeah. Okay. It was difficult to see from your thumbnail of you, sorry. Okay. Yeah, so let's thank see. You. So um, here, like if you can see the pinch pot that I'm making, uh, it's kind of backwards how I have to how I have to angle it. So this would be the base, and then if you want to build up and create something taller, I'm going to show you how to make coils to add on to. How do I do this this way? And we can add a handle if wanted. Or if you want to make it for a planter, we're just going to put some drainage holes. Or if you're somebody who can restrain yourself and not overwater, you don't have to. But it's taken me 30 years to learn how to not overwater. And then this is just the regular pinch pot. And so you can see it's about a, a hand, a good hand size, a uh, handful. Um, Clay does shrink 11% when we fire it. So, so you can imagine clay is made from soil and chemicals, different chemicals and minerals and water. So when we fire it, that's taking all of the water out of it. Um, so it's like baking. When you bake a cake, you bake it to a certain temperature and all the water evaporate, not all the water, Hopefully it's not super dry, but it evaporates and it creates a different substance. That's what we're doing when we're firing the clay. We want to make sure that we can, that it's hard and that we can use it over and over and over. So if we didn't fire this, if you guys were just making a pot at home and you wanted to put water in it for your plant, uh, it would definitely start to get soggy and soft and disintegrate over time. Okay, so let's see, we've talked a lot about our base. See where you're at, how are your walls? And I can see that I have a little bit of some, some little cracking going on because it's been out in my hands, it's getting drier. And what you can do is to fill those in, you just tap the water we don't want too much. It's better to have too much, too little than too much because you can't really take away a really soggy piece. You would have to wait a long time for it to dry. So just put a little bit of water and you can smooth those cracks. I usually don't smooth um, too much as I go uh, at the very beginning because I know that it's gonna dry out some more while I'm working on it. And I just kind of wait until the end and then I modify. But as you can probably see the cracking happening here, you can smooth it. Ooh, looking good, you guys. Very nice and even. That is not easy to do. So give yourself some grace. That's something I always tell people when working with pottery. It looks easy because this clay is soft. And if somebody's done it a lot, then, you know, they make it look like it's butter, but this is a, this can be just a pinch pot if you want, but I feel like I gave you more clay. So if you can, let's make a bigger piece. Or if you're wanting to maybe make little, a series of little cups or something, then use the rest of your clay to make another pinch pot. While we are here with our little, 
pinch pot. I would like us to put our your initials on it or your name or something. Um, let's see, I have this roundness that's a little bit uneven of the bottom of my, my pinch pot. And so what I'm gonna do to even that out is drop it on your flat surface, lift it up and give it a tap, tap, tap. And you'll see you're trying to kind of make, make the top here parallel with the ground. So then it doesn't, it doesn't roll over. Maybe if you can see here, do you see I have a flat surface, but I wanted to keep some of the roundness here because again, I don't want it to look like a can, just flat. You wanna give it a little bit of height and that, that creates a nice interesting shape. If, it's, if yours is flat, don't worry, especially if it's your very first one. So I gave it a tap tap and now you can see I've got my bottom here that's smooth, but I still have some roundness, some lift. Okay. Okay. So I'll, I'll uh, just kind of end it for those who want to just do a little pinch pot like this. Uh, how you might want to end your top is to smooth out any cracks. Oh, and put your name. So we have a toothpick. Um, the cool thing about pottery is you can use almost anything for a tool. So if you have any kind of found objects, um, anything sharp, you can use that to create interesting shapes or textures or designs. Um, but if you would put your name or your initials on the bottom, so then that way, when you come back to pick yours up, it'll be easily identifiable. Uh, on this one, let me see if this is gonna show up in the camera very well. I carved in the bottom, Big Read 2021. Yeah. But then that way I, could, I can definitely identify it when we're pulling it out of the kiln. So that's kind of hard to see, but you also might wanna take a picture of yours or something when it's done so then you know if you did some designs on the side or something that make it yours. Take your, your toothpick and I'm gonna put my initials AG in the bottom. And it's good to remember to do this before we create a bigger piece because sometimes you'll create something and then you don't really wanna flip it back over while it's, it's wet like this. So you could also put the year on it if you wanted put your full name if it fits. All right, so that's the pinch pot, but let's create some height. So if you guys remember, you probably learned this in grade school of how to create snakes or coils. So pull a little bit off. Um, it'll be easier to work with if you just pull a little chunk. And if we had a lot of room or we we're creating a huge piece, we might wanna use more clay at once, but for our little hands, we're just gonna create a little, pull off a little chunk and then start rolling it between your hands just to get it started. But this is really uneven and lumpy, right? So I'm gonna use a cutting board because that's what I have here in my office, just something clean and flat. And a good tip to create an even coil is to start, if you can see my overhead camera first, that would be best. But if you start, put your fingers together and roll back and forth and then slowly pull your fingers away, pull your hands away from each other. So I'm rolling back and forth and then gliding my hands away. And I can still see I've got a little bit here that's a bump. So I wanna even that out as much as possible. How are you guys doing with this part? Is this, <laughs> am I going too quickly with it? 
Do you guys need some tips? If it breaks a little bit, that's totally cool. We can use that. Oh, I should have said at the beginning too, the, the awesome thing about clay is that if you don't like it in this state, just squeeze it back. Like if you were making a pinch pot and you didn't like how you were doing it, you can just smack it, squeeze it back and start over. We, we only have a little bit of time that we can do that. Like while we're working with it this morning, you couldn't come back to it tomorrow and say, oh, I want to, I want to smash it back together and recreate because it will have dried out by then. Um, but right now clay is very forgivable. So if your coils that you're making, if they pull apart, totally cool. If they're the right size, we'll just, we'll just go with it or you'll just smash them back together and do, do it again. So as you can see here, I've got my coil, kind of making it as, as even as possible. But no worries if you didn't, because also now that you know how to pinch, then when we're going around on your pot, if there's a little bit of thickness on one side than the other, you'll just squeeze it, you'll pinch it. So, to attach something to clay, to attach clay to itself, we do a technique called scoring. And scoring is creating little hash marks, little cuts in the clay, and that will allow two different clays to stick together. So take your toothpick and Let's see. Also, I think, did I tell you guys, if you wanted the edge of your pot to be more even, you could flip it upside down and give it a tap. So then that means your walls are more even and strong. Yeah, I didn't do that before. So if you guys, before we continue with our coils, if you want to, it's like you're using gravity and a little bit of, uh, a little bit of movement there to help you create a more even top. Do you see how now it's just completely the same height across? Okay. So now to score it, we're gonna take our toothpick and we're gonna create hash marks. Hash marks are like little little tick marks, little lines, just little indentions. It's ugly, but don't worry because we're gonna cover it up. Well, okay, I don't wanna judge. If you wanted to do that texture all over the sides, that could actually look pretty cool. But we wouldn't wanna just leave our pot like this, I don't think. So if you can see, I scratched, how do I get closer? I scratched just a little bit under the surface to create some texture. And before we attach our coils, <clears throat> if you could take just a tap of your water, just a tap, okay? <laughs> and then rub it across the top Usually we would do, if we were working with bigger pieces, we would use slip and slip is very, very wet clay. So it's very thin, it kind of looks like a paint and that would, it's like a glue. It would just attach the clay to itself. But since our clay is small and we're working quickly on it, just a little tap tap of the water, rub it across the top. And then I'm going to take my coil and fit it on the top. So go around your pot and then pinch off whatever's too long. So if you're looking at this screen, I set it around the top and then I pinched it here. So then I, I kind of trimmed it. And that is setting your coil on top, but that's not attaching it. So what we need to do is we need to rub the clay into 
each other. So I usually use my thumb. So another uh, good tip is to hold on the inside of your pot. So do you see how I'm holding it in there to give it some, some strength? Because I'm trying not to push against it too much. I want my walls to just come up and straight, not really out and wonky. So keep one hand in to give it some stability. And then with your other hand, and I, I think a thumb works well, is to smooth that line, blend that line. And kind of depending on which side you're on, I mean, what the wetness is of your clay. Down here, it looks like, oh, this is softer. So I'm gonna pull up from the base of my pot to smooth that line. Sometimes it's easier to smooth the, the newest piece that I just added. So you'll, you'll kind of, it'll start to get a little bit intuitive, hopefully, after you're going around your pot. Um, because this is, this is one of the oldest art forms in the world. And I feel like you can tell Things like this, the pinch pot is the most basic first kind of form that was made. And you can just use anything for a tool. Um, there's no right or wrong. You don't have to do it exactly like me. So if you can think about that, like humans have just been making these for so long, whatever you feel intuitively of how to smooth and build up that's the right way for your pot. It's not always the same way I do it every single time. Because also maybe, maybe I, I squeeze too much on one side and not on the other. And so I can feel there's a little bit off, a little bit of a, a little bit of um, inconsistency in my wall. And that could be with the clay too. Sometimes it's super soft, sometimes it's super hard. If, if the, your clay was harder, adding more water might be helpful um, to smooth things together more. If the clay was too soft, it would be hard for the walls to build up and hold on top of themselves. Um, also, if you could, you might want to, to give it a little bit of a extra um, seal. You could also smooth that line on the inside. It almost smoothed itself together. I don't know if you can see in my camera. It did from smoothing on the outside, but sometimes, again, with your clay, if it's drier, it might kind of need that extra boost. So you might want to smooth the inside seam as well, the inside coil, depending just how you want. I've also made coil pots where I didn't smooth. I really liked the line. Um, but in, if you did that, if you wanted to see your coils and not really smooth, you would just need to make sure that you had quite a bit of water and your scoring was really good. So then there's that attachment happening um, between the two clays. Otherwise, the coils will start to shrink quicker than the rest of the pot, than the base, and then well, as it dries, they will just they will just kind of shrink and repel each other, and then your coils aren't going to stick. So it is important to make sure that you have some connection on each level in some way. So if you're not going to smooth them together, then you'll want to make sure there's scoring probably deeper than we did before and more water. Okay, are you guys ready to do another coil? So at this point, you guys have a pinch pot, you have a coil made, you can continue to make more coils. What I would like to do is to build up on this more so then I can add a handle for those who want to do that. So to start another layer, I'm gonna score the top. So using your little, ooh, when we do this with kids, um, we'll just use our fingernail, our thumbnail to score. But 
we're being a little cleaner here and using a toothpick, but something to just create those sharp marks in there for a nice seal. And I'm gonna roll out some more coils. And so remember to make it, if you wanna make it as even as possible, start with your hands together and roll back and forth and away. Also, you'll want to know, you'll want to roll all the way, make a full rotation. Otherwise, you're just kind of making a flat. You're making it more um, flat than round. So if that's happening to you, then you'll just want to roll a little bit farther. This is kind of a thin, a little too thin, but I'm going to go with it because we're just building on top of each other. Okay, can you use coils to add thickness? Um, let's see, so are you meaning to add more thickness, a wider, to make a wider cup as it goes out? Is that maybe what you're meaning? Yes, um, that's, what mean. that's what we're talking about. Yeah, so you, just as long as there's enough of a, um, let me see, of a base, of a supportiveness, it, you wouldn't want the coils to be so thick that there's not any support down here, but you could, you could gradually make them thicker and thicker and thicker, and then your piece will come out like this instead of straight up. So you definitely could do that, make it more like a vase. But I think just keeping that in mind that you want to make sure there's support. Because if, if you all of a sudden put on a thick coil on top of something that's in half that size, then it'll, it'll slump and not have stability. And after you get a little bit of the hang of this, you could, add a couple of coils and then smooth. So that's what I usually do. And I'm gonna go a little bit faster and please put your questions in the chat or you can show on the video how you're doing. Um, but I'm gonna go a little bit faster so I can show you how to make a handle if you're wanting that and then how to glaze it. So when we're done um, with these pieces, you guys will be able to bring these back to City Arts. So the same place that you picked up your kit and we'll just set them on the, that table where you picked up your kits um, and we'll fire them for you. It takes, well, in, it takes a couple of days for pottery to dry. And actually in this cold weather, it's taking even longer. The drying process is so slow. So what we'll do is your piece has to be completely dry before we fire it. And then we fire it, which again, that's like baking in an oven, uh, except it gets way hotter. So it gets almost to 2000 degrees. And again, it evaporates or sucks all that moisture out of your clay and creates a very hard surface instead. And that takes a about two days to fire. And then you guys will have your piece back. So again, this is just a simple shape, but if you guys wanted to build in different ways, you could build a, a rectangle box doing a base, kind of creating that pinch pot squeeze base, making it into the rectangle or square that you want. And then you could put coils to build up and around. And 
And let's see, someone asked, when do we need to have our pieces to City Arts? If you would, um, you can bring them back Tuesday through Friday of this next week. Um, and also ultimately, if you can't make it here by Friday of next week, uh, we'll know you could drop it off anytime really, but to have it with that load with most of, of everyone, if you could have it by next Friday, we close at 5 p.m. Uh, your piece might not be completely dry yet, since I said it was so it's so cold and things are slowly drying now, but we'll make sure that it's dry before it fires. And you'll see, if you've never done anything with clay before, you'll see the difference that starts happening when it's dry. It goes from this kind of gray looking, cold to the touch, and then it gets harder and lighter. When we fire it, it'll be white. Did you give us all the same glaze? Is it similar to one of those that you have in under the camera now? Oh, uh-huh. So mo everyone has the same kind of glaze, but probably different colors. For the most part, we just did neutrals. Um, I have this brown, which will look like this one. And if you guys continue into the world of pottery, there's so many different things you can do with glaze. Um, I really love this, this one that I don't know. Oh yeah, it can kind of come through. So this is a, it's called cosmic tea dust. It's beautiful. I love the sheen to it. Yeah, there's glitter. There, it's like glitter. Um, it's so pretty, especially if the sun, when the sunlight hits it. Um, let's see, this is one that I threw on the potter's wheel and it's a, it's called wheat, textured wheat. And if you, let's see, yeah, you can see there's like these bumps and different colors, different variances happen. Oh, I have, this has my office supplies in it, but this is one that I made and then Raku fired it. So, uh, that means that we fired it in a bucket with all kinds of materials on it. And then the different materials like leaves, horse hair, trash, whatever we threw on it created these different effects. On Raku pottery, ooh, look at this. Can you see that rainbow kind of effervescence happening? Not unless you put it under the camera. Under this one? Let's see, on the other camera, it was showing this purple. I'm trying to see if I can do it. Um, but the, the sad thing about Raku is that you can't eat from it. But there's like this kind of smoky effect that happens because it's just flame on your piece. Normally we fire things in a kiln that's just like a big, big oven. And let's see, someone's asking, when do we apply the glaze in, if, if all in a perfect world, if we could, I'd like you to wait until your piece is dry to fire or to glaze it. Um, but if you only have time just today to work on this, you can apply the glaze while it's wet. It will be just a more even, this one I applied when it was wet and you can see it did a pretty good job. This is three coats. So one to two coat will probably be able to apply right away. And then you'll need to wait for that third one because you'll see it'll be still wet. Um, and, and if possible, the longer you wait between, the more even your clay is gonna be, your glaze. And so let's see, we've got about 15 minutes left. Please feel free to ask any questions that you might have. And I'm just gonna build up a couple more layers on my pot here. And for a mug, since I'm gonna add a handle to this, for a mug in general, you want you want to build up and pretty straight. But if you are, you are making a bowl, 
you could definitely try to make your shape go out. Let's see, so someone was asking, why won't we do a bisque fire with this clay? Um, again, in a, if we had all the time in the world and could do multiple um, processes, we would. Then your piece, you'll just see there'll be more consistencies with the glaze. But since we're doing this, there's a lot of us, there's a hundred people um, doing it all at once for this first experience, then we're gonna just fire at once. Um, whoever asked that, they are right in that usually you would do a bisque firing. So that's the first firing to make your clay hard and then you would glaze it on top of that already fired clay. And then that would just create more consistencies in the glaze. And you'll, if you, if you did, if you do pottery more often, you'll see there's a lot of things that you try to control and predict, but you also have to be very flexible because you might think you know how it's going to turn out, but then in the, in the kiln, it might completely change. The glaze might be something completely different than what you thought. So there's a lot of unknowns with clay. And I think if I, if I help you guys learn these techniques, that's where you'll find some consistencies and then you get to play around with the glazes. Ooh, someone asked, do you need to put clay, glaze on the entire piece? So if you are glazing, then please glaze everything but the bottom. So if you, if that helps for you to just glaze while it's sitting here, don't pick it up and then glaze everything that's, that's not touching the table. If it is touching the table, then that glaze will stick to the kiln shelf when we fire it and then we won't have a piece. So if you'll see, I have this, this bottom here completely white. Also, when I do my pottery at home, when I wheel throw it, uh, oops, nope, I got coffee in there, I forgot. Um, you just always wanna leave the bottom free of glaze. Sometimes if you're creating something that you really want glaze on every single part of it, you could, and then we would put it on stilts. So that's a little, a little ledge kind of thing to put in the kiln and then it's up. And then in case the glaze does run, then it won't stick to the bottom of the shelf. And someone asked, are the glazes you gave us food safe? Yes, um, any glaze that I use is always food, food safe. So especially when I'm making it with students for something like this, just in case we wanna make sure it's food safe because in case somebody who doesn't know what pottery is and that some glazes aren't, we just wanna make sure nobody um, drinks out of something that's unsafe. If you're doing pottery more intensely, like I said, with this one that I made um, and we raku fired it, that's not food safe. Everything else is though. For this purpose. And someone's asking when should we put holes in the bottom for a planter? Uh, I would do that at the very end. Um, Let's see, I think I can show you both. I think I'm gonna make just an example that has holes, but also a handle. So I'm gonna put one more coil on top here. And then making sure that my coil has been attached around all of those seams. And then I'm going to show you how to put a hole in the bottom for the planter. So it could be one hole. I think for this small of a planter of a space, one would be enough. I usually on my big planters, oh, you can see like a plant that I have in the back here. Um, that's a, a planter I made. I put three holes in it. I think that comes from, from years of learning how not to overwater. 
and going, okay, I really need to have a pot with drainage holes because that it will help you keep your plants longer. Can you microwave? You can. These are microwave safe. Also, they're dishwasher safe. But what I tell people when they um, use pottery for everyday use, and if you're gonna do, if you're gonna put it in a dishwasher, then just make sure you're not accidentally clanking them together, if possible, because that's where the the actual uh, problem might happen. I'm lucky because I make so many bowls and plates and mugs all the time, I do accidentally crack because I don't have a dishwasher. So I always hand wash and, and usually it's the putting it over into the strainer accidentally hit the handle. Then I just make another one. Can we make multiple pieces? Ooh, yes. So if you're making multiple pieces from the clay you have here, then um, just make sure you put your name, your initials or something on it that will help you identify your piece, pieces. But yes, feel free to use, use up the clay. And let's see, let's put, if you're gonna make a planter, let's do that next and then I'll show you how to do the handle. So I've got my pinch pot built up as high as I want. And again, I'm using my hand on the inside for stability. You don't wanna just start stabbing into your clay without holding onto the inside because then you're gonna to start to really change the shape. So if you wanna keep that nice shape that you've worked on for this past hour, then I would suggest giving it some support by putting your hand on the inside. So I'm holding it like this. Take your, your toothpick and or we could also use, if you want to, actually, I think this might be better. If you use the end of the paintbrush, you can stick that through the bottom. And so give it a little twist and a little push until you've gone all the way through. Kind of looks like an arrow right now. So again, I used the end of the paintbrush and I've pushed through until I had a hole. And on the inside, do you see that there's a little crumb that kind of happens from when you push in? I usually like to smooth that out. So again, because this is just a little bitty baby pot, one drainage hole is fine. How do I flip this upside down? One drainage hole is fine. Um, if you want something for evenness, you know, you could add more. And again, if you are creating pottery, if this becomes a hobby of yours, you could use almost anything for a succulent planter because that's something that you just water just a little bit. So if you don't have holes in the bottom, it all is not lost, you could still use it. And let's attach a handle for those who are interested. So I'm gonna, take a little piece of my clay here. I'm gonna make this coil thicker than the, the walls that I did, just because I want it to be more substantial and not super floppy. Let's see if my walls are too thin with the firing damage it. Um, I'm trying to think, there could be some cracking that happens, uh, but I think, if you see mine here, they're not super thick. If your walls are more thin and they're not really holding up, I think, I think you'd still be fine. We do, you know, sculptures and different types of firing here at City Arts. And basically everything, as long as we wait until it's completely dry, everything makes it through the firing. So there might be a little splitting that happens, like you're asking maybe between the coils if they're not completely sealed together, but that glaze also could help fill in some of the cracks. Um, let's see, so I've got a coil here that I wanna make for a handle. And I'm going to, because you can see there's like cracks in my clay because our clay has been sitting out for an hour, so it's getting dry. 
I'm going to use my thumb and pointer finger and get those wet. And then, let's see, I'll do this over here first. Then I'm gonna smooth it. Oops, I'm gonna smooth it. And that will kind of lengthen your, your handle a bit. So for this camera screen, it's hard to do that because I'm, I'm using gravity to help as well. I'm just kind of holding and smoothing and then lengthening to create a to create a smooth handle. Because I think that part there, you might want it to be just a little bit more smooth and consistent because you're gonna hold that if you're gonna drink from it. And if we had more time, what we would do is let this dry for a little bit to kind of strengthen up, um, but we're gonna just go with it because we only have this time and it'll work. We just need to be gentle with it. So to attach the handle, again, I'm putting my, my, most of my hand inside of the mug to give it support. And that the two attachment points where you're gonna attach the handle, you'll wanna score it. So decide where you want your handle to start below the lip of the mug and then where you want it to end, give it a little score. So I scored it here and here. And now I'm gonna pinch off a little bit of my handle here so I, I know what I'm working with. So now my, my clay is really wet, it's really moist. If yours is a little bit too dry, uh, add a little more water Again, I'm gonna give a tap, just a tap, tap of the water and put that on top of where I've scored it. So tap, tap, okay. And then if you have like I have here, thicker at the top, thinner at the bottom, can you see that difference? I'm gonna put the thicker part at the top of the mug. Again, this is for strength and stability. And so I'm pushing I'm using my hand on the inside for stability and I'm pushing to seal that handle. So you can see that connection point. You wanna push and smooth until we've got that connection really made. Otherwise, again, when, we, when it starts drying, if we didn't smooth that together, uh, this big part of the mug is going to dry slower than the handle, the handle will just pop off. So if possible, we don't want that to happen. So I've got the top part up here attached. And now I want to attach this bottom part. Let's see, it'll be better if you see it sideways. So I'm going to find that place where I've got my scoring and a little bit of water there. Again, hold on the inside for stability so you're not smashing your mug around too much. And I'm gonna press and we're melding that clay together. So I'm pressing and then let's smooth it into itself. And we wanna make that clay just be one big ball that we designed and smooth it all into itself. So there's not really any harsh edges. And that way we're ensuring this isn't gonna pop off as it dries. Okay. So you can spend more time just really smoothing things out. Um, as this dries later today, maybe just within the next hour or so, you can also, as it starts to stiffen up, you can also um, change the shape a little bit. What I usually do, because like this one is really soft. So look at it there. I don't like that. I want that to be rounder. So I'm gonna, when I set it down, I'm gonna try to make my circle more of a circle. So then as it's, then when I'm, when I finally leave it for the day, it's gonna dry in that position. So right now it is still manipulable. 
we can manipulate the clay and change it to how we want it while it's in this wetness. But then later it's gonna start drying and we can't. If you started to try to manipulate it, it would crack. So do all of the difference, make all the changes you want while it's in this stage. So rubbing it, smoothing it out. And if you have the time, then I would say wait until it's dry to glaze. But if you cannot, so like if I'm doing this with students and they only are with us for one day, we'll just go ahead and glaze it right now. Um, and just know then if your, your glaze might be a little bit thinner, might be thicker in some, in some spots. Okay, so looks like I've got a mug, got a handle going on. I've got some drainage holes. Let's see, someone says, can it be too thick? It actually, it really can't. So as long as we let it dry completely before we fire it, then there will be no problem. The reason we want it to dry completely is because you guys know the boiling point of water is what, 212? So if there's water left in this piece when we go to fire it and we know that it's gonna get almost 2000 degrees, once it goes over that boiling point, then steam starts to happen and it expands and it'll make your piece blow up or crack. So if yours, are, if yours are really thick, that's totally okay. We're just gonna let it dry for longer and you'll see the difference as the next couple of days go. You'll see what it means for it to be dry, for it to dry. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how to apply some coats of glaze. And let's see, oh, we are after 11. So if anybody needs to jump off, please, Go ahead and do that. But glazing is, is very simple. You're just going to basically paint your pot. And I gave you guys all just some old paint brushes. Um, they can be used one time or feel free to use them for anything else. You can upcycle. And I want you to just remember, do not glaze the bottom. And if you can apply three coats, so as you can see here, it's pretty thin to begin with. Also, I'm working on wet clay. So I'm kind of like, everything's just really wet. So if you can wait, I suggest doing that. If not, go ahead and, and cover all that you can. The thicker, the better though, with the glaze, because then I think you'll like the results. And let's see, um, I would like to encourage you guys to check out City Arts for pottery classes. We have classes for any experience level. So you could be completely brand new. Like if today was the first day you've ever touched clay, you could definitely come here and we would help you get started. Our pottery classes are for hand building or wheel throwing. Most of the time, I feel like when people think of pottery, they think you need to use a wheel that spins around and you push clay on it and create that way. But you can also hand build, meaning what we did today was hand building. We did a pinch pot and then a coil technique. You can also do slabs. So you would roll out clay and create a, a slab and then build up that way. And how can you tell that it's completely dry after it has been glazed? Um, let's see, you'll, you'll be able to tell because there won't be any shine left on the glaze. And then for your pot, when you bring it back, be very careful. Um, I would suggest maybe putting it back in the bag that we gave you your, tool, your, your kit in, uh, but just be careful because it's in the most delicate state when this clay is dry. Um, but the difference is it will not be really wet or cool to the touch. So then that's how we'll know that the, the clay is dry and then the glaze won't be shiny. So right now this glaze is, is still wet and this is one coat. Usually when I do this, I could do two coats in a row, but that's when it's hotter. 
when it's warmer out. So temperature changes how, you, how your clay is affected and also your glaze. So temperature, humidity, I can also tell a difference in the summer. Okay. So that is our pinch pot workshop. And I hope that if this inspired you, you guys come in and take another class or a workshop. I hope you enjoy your Valentine's weekend. If you are headed over to any of the other day of creativity things, have a great time.